tenth or greater that is associated with cloud formation. And so we know now that these are not clouds in any conventional sense. They are indeed a unique and artificial creation that now crosses new thresholds in the atmospheric and geophysical sciences. There is one way that such a transformation can be made. And that is with the introduction of vast quantities of an extremely small, water-loving metallic salt at flight altitude. This transformation cannot be achieved with water vapor alone, and the emissions under examination are indeed not water vapor. They are solid, and they are well entrenched into your air supply. These important conclusions are at the very heart of the aerosol operations that are being disclosed here. These changes in the very atmosphere that we breathe have a fundamental impact upon the life of this planet. And these aerosol operations have many potential applications that reduce the sanctity of that life. These operations are being conducted. They are being conducted without your participation or your informed consent. They are affecting your life, the lives of those you know and love, and the very life of the planet itself. Try to remember the color blue, for once it was yours to see. The blue sky is your birthright and a source for joy, and it remains at the very core of our existence. There are factual reasons for the blue color of the sky, which can certainly be traced to the cleanliness and clarity of the air that you breathe. But please do not lose the wonder of the sky itself, the magic and emotions that you have once shared with the earth in all of its glory. These are more than facts, reasons, and observations. They are the experiences and memories of life itself. see blue now, at least not in the same way that many of us know and remember. Your horizon has largely turned to white, and there is a very good reason that this is so. These fine, solid materials, or aerosols, are now in your way, and you will see clearly no more. The source and origin of these aerosols is now abundantly clear, and the aircraft operations have now made their mark upon this planet. It is a mark that you must now live with, and that you must now breathe, and that you must bear the consequences of. That is, 
unless we all become aware of the level of damage that has already been done, and unless we act together to reclaim our planet and its atmosphere. These images were taken in what was once one of the cleanest locations on the Earth, and that is the high desert of the Southwest. You may now see for yourself the daily reality of your existence, and it is a sad change that we have allowed to occur. Please, remember the color blue. site under the name of www.carnicum.com was created to call attention to the unusual events and effects surrounding aircraft activity over the southwestern desert skies of the United States. The developer of that site was a generally quiet and conservative former federal employee with no political or environmental notoriety. Within a matter of days, it was apparent that this site was immediately drawing attention from a broad host of high-level government and military agencies, defense contractors, research organizations, chemical and pharmaceutical companies, and health organizations. This interest was documented on this same site for a period of several months, by which time an obvious pattern of monitoring the developing research was apparent. Over the next few years, a glaring disparity had evolved. On one hand, a high level of monitoring of documentation, sampling methods, research, analysis, and disclosure efforts was now documented. On the other, a campaign of continuous dismissal of the significance of the issue and a refusal to investigate was conducted by those very same visitors. You are now seeing a small sample of these frequent visitors and monitoring agencies and companies, such as the Pentagon, multiple Air Force bases, the United States Senate, aircraft manufacturers, pharmaceutical and drug companies, national security, intelligence and emergency agencies, weapon and defense system contractors, research organizations, and the media. The United States Air Force is now on public record as declaring that the entire subject of this documentary is a hoax. This assertion was first made by Lieutenant Colonel Michael K. Gibson in August of 2000 when he stated that, quote, the chemtrail hoax has been investigated and refuted by many established and accredited universities, scientific organizations, and major media publications, end quote. This assertion was later escalated when Colonel Walter M. Washabaugh in 2001 repeated verbatim the previous declaration. Colonel Washabaugh also did not opt to provide the detailed list of the refuting parties. Charles H. Taylor, North Carolina, from the House of Representatives, has stated in March of 2000, in a response to constituent concern, that he has been, quote, informed by the Air Force that these chemtrails are nothing more than ordinary contrails, unquote. He also states that they pose no environmental hazard or risk to human health, and that we can be assured that he will continue to monitor this issue. Harold Halsness, from the Office of Secretary of Defense, and in response to a direct inquiry to former President of the United States, William Jefferson Clinton, in January of 2000 states that he is familiar with some of the reports on this issue, but that he finds them unsubstantiated by the facts. In addition, assurance is offered that there is certainly no cause for alarm. In the first of many responses from the United States Environmental Protection Agency, under the directive of Carol M. Browner, Administrator, it is acknowledged in December of 1999 that citizen concern is focused on whether or not aircraft may be involved in operations that release chemical or biological substances. The EPA responds that they are, quote, unaware, unquote, of any such applications by such aircraft. In January of 2000, 
a certified letter including a physical sample of